All right, guys, Justin Russell. Josh Schneider. Bringing you another comparison video here. Today we're coming with you with the 3-in-1 HD versus a Garmin GT56 UHD transducer. All right, guys, so we got back out on El Dorado Lake doing our normal comparison stuff, our normal stuff on El Dorado Lake, or our normal structure, I should say, comparing to a pro unit with the 3-in-1 HD versus mm -hmm. the 8612 XSV with the Garmin GT56 transducer. Let's get this a comparison Let's going here. First off, real well similar here, if you will, looking at these two right out of the get-go. Like, yeah. really, really good target separation on both. Um, you, man, you can still see the stuff in, in there the, yeah. on the Garmin, in the water column, right? Yeah, exactly. Up in the water column, you see a little more noise, but you're actually seeing, you're seeing suspended fish, and you're seeing the parts of the structure come off the ball. We lose the cables on the Garmin. The Garmin doesn't really show the cabling system as well as the Lorance. Can you pick it out, and do yeah. you know it's there? Yes. yes. But it's not bang right in your face like the HD is. It's not popping. No. Yeah. Not popping. And, you know, color palettes, we talked about that. You know, this one's, I don't remember what this one's called. I think the underwater yeah. truss system here, we're seeing the shadows way better on the Garmin too, right? Yeah. But as far as looking at the truss, both are really, really good. But again, we're picking up the cables so much better on the Lowrance. And we're seeing fish suspended around those cables a lot better on the Lowrance mm -hmm. as well too. It's odd, you know, look at the bottom definition. You know, you can see everything very clearly. The shadows are very clearly. There's, oh man, it's so hard. So I'm seeing the rocks uh, slightly more clearly on the HD. Mm -hmm. And then when I look over at the GT56, some of the bigger things, it's like the edges are cleaner. Like yeah. it's, it's not fuzzy on the, those squares, what we know yes. those are blocks. Yeah. Like the, the edges look super sharp. Yeah. on the GT56. They're running a little hotter though. Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. probably some of the reason too. Now, this is the part where we made the turn. You can see we swiped a little bit. Okay, now we're going back to that underwater point. It's a point that extends fairly far mm -hmm. out. You can see it from the bank. Really, really good target separation. Yeah, so you can see, look fish. at the school of bait fish right here off that yeah. anchor. Didn't have that when we were idling over with the Lowrance. Um, but here's kind of the, the, the test is what does it look like when we're coming up here on this rock point and what does it look like with the anchors? Both, the are, <laughs> both are so good. Really good. Yeah. Really, really close on stuff. Offset definitions, cables coming across. We're a little closer here. We're only out 62 feet on the garment. Again, auto settings, yeah. auto adjusting. The Lowrance went out to 80. We'll probably see it jump back here. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, up to the brush pile now. Let's see what that brush pile looks like. Cables definitely show better on the HD cables yeah. out here. I'm going to go ahead and pause Again, this right here. The, on the HD, the, the branches, branches that are extending yes. up into the water column. Um, the HD, uh, guys, check out the channel. We've been doing comparisons on these. This is our third one here. So, yeah. <laughs> but, so, so far... The HD is the only one that's shown those branches mm -hmm. extending up into the water column. All of them have great separation within the brush pile itself, mm -hmm. but there's just those couple branches that are sticking up in the water column that the HD is the only one that's picked it up. Yeah, 100%. Makes a big, big difference. Yeah. Finish that out of here. See these anchors in place. I mean, Man, really, really damn close. All right, guys. Yeah. That's... Of the two that we've done on side, that's probably been the closest, yeah, yeah. in my opinion. And all of them are so good anymore. Like I they said, really it's, uh, I, you know, what are you comfortable with? What operating system are you comfortable with? Like, mm -hmm. there are going to be differences of things that I think to an untrained eye you're going to miss, right? Like, sure. Again, we're, we're talking single digit percentages as to yeah. which one's better in this application versus that one and this and that. Yeah. We're talking one or two percent difference. At a high, high level of fishing, your elite pros, your um, pro bass tour guys, the guys that are staring at stuff that are looking for single, like a single individual fish, is it going to be a difference that matters? Yes. Yeah. 
the weekend warrior guy, your tournament guy, your BFL, your Toyota series guy, go with the operating system that you're comfortable with. Go with what forward facing well, yeah. sonar units you like. I really think we're going to not have those Swiss army boats anymore. No, you know, no, they're, they're going away. A Swiss army boat for you guys, <laughs> yeah. like two or three different brands of electronics on a boat to get the job done. Right. So in particular, like we'll probably see a Swiss army boat fairly frequently until everyone has 360 imaging, right? Right. right. But you look at this, it was like, oh, I wanted the Garmin for live scope. I wanted the Lowrance for the down imaging and 2D sonar. I wanted the Humminbird for your 360 and your side imaging, and they're getting all so close now. Mm -hmm. I truly feel like in the next five years, they're all going to have 360. Yeah. They're all going to have amazing forward-facing sonar. They're all going to be great at mapping. They're all going to be great at side imaging. It's going to be, what are you comfortable with using? What yeah. have you been using? That's where that efficiency goes, too, because, you know, that 1% and those guys seeing those little targets and things like that. Yeah, on that level, it's because they're highly efficient no matter what operating system. Yeah, yeah 100%. So, you know, for the rest of the world, that's <laughs> not looking for the 1% of, I can't believe that fella saw that. Um, it's what can you operate faster? Yes. What are you going to spend less time, you know, fiddling with your graphs and more time with your line in the water. And I think it's to the point now with all three brands, it's can you navigate it quickly um, mm -hmm. as far as the graph itself? Um, and are the tools gonna work for what you need and your depth sets and things like that? Because the frequencies are Really close. Really now. close. Yeah. You know, they're all 25. above a thousand kilohertz now. Yeah, all of them are above a cat thousand kilohertz. All of them's like what, ten seventy, ten seventy five, and eleven hundred, I believe is yeah. what it is. So it's all right there. Um, everything's incredibly similar. It's just a matter of again, what do you like? What are you efficient with? And what can you get on the boat, get it rocking for what you need, and spend more time fishing. You know? Well, and I think the big thing too is I think a lot of people always felt if they went with this brand, they were giving something up by not having XYZ brand. Yeah. Which is why we always had the Swiss yep. Army boats, right? But I feel like, I I really feel like in certain segments now, especially side imaging, 2D sonar, down imaging, mapping, in that specific segment, I don't feel like anybody's giving up anything nope. by going with any of the three brands. No. Like, they're all really, really close, so. And, and you, last thought on that, we're looking at all these in auto settings, too. Yeah, and not And in auto settings, they're yeah. really close. So, especially if someone wants to take the time to dial them in, that you can dial all these in. Oh, yeah. And it's what you can get out of them. Man, it's, you know. Absolutely. Splitting hairs, trying to figure out which one's going to really be the best. All right, guys. Hope you like these videos. We got more videos coming your way. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Are you tired of your old marine electronics? At RMP, we make trade-in easy. Three steps. Step one, shoot us an email. Get a quote. Step two, send us your old unit and get credit. Step three, get your brand new unit and get installed on your boat today.